Hello. <laughs> this is a bit of an informal start, uh, mainly because I forgot to film an intro to this video and uh, my camera is playing up. So yeah, so we're doing it via the phone, which is probably better quality than my old camera anyway. But yeah, this is the second part of the Hanny Mex. Apologize for the shaking, that's definitely gonna happen. Uh, so we very quickly had a look inside it. We worked out that the, uh, the, the polarity of the power supply was and in this one, we're gonna basically try and get the thing running. <laughs> Hopefully this will be the end of the, of the actual run, but um, yeah, it's not going to part three. We're definitely doing whatever we can in this part. Let's just get on with it. Okay, so this is where we basically left off last time. Um, now, there are a few things we want to do in this episode. So we want to clean this, at least get it token clean so at least it doesn't feel so horrible to touch. Uh, we want to um, well, get a power supply so we can power the thing on. Um, we'll be taking all this stuff out so we can actually put this uh, put this into a sink and wash it. Uh, and we need to kind of really repair this so we need to straighten this up using uh, pliers of some description and uh, give it a new top so that it's got a bobbly bit like that. Uh, we do this first because I think this will be the easiest one other than the, the straightening, but the, this bit obviously, like many things in life, will be solved with 3D printing. So let's quickly do that now. There we go. It's not exactly the same as the other one, but it's close enough. Uh, yeah, we still have to straighten this bar, so we'll do that in a second, but that should work. Now this bit here, I think should come off. Give it a bit of a go with the pliers. It looks like it's got some thread lock in there, so that's, um, we'll have to override that. Uh, and then we'll just be able to glue that brass nut assembly inside there, and then that should hold. Solved. Right, <laughs> anyway, let's try and straighten this. Right. So, this looks like it's fairly tough metal, which is going to make straightening it harder. It's also confusing as to how it was bent so easily. It's not easily necessarily. Um, okay, we're failing at all parts. I think we have to take this apart. Hmm. Well, it's quite easy to take apart. It was just clipped together, and you could do it with your hand. But it's a very pleasing mechanism. I feel <laughs> it's a standard like gimbal style mover. It's kind of very close to what we use now, but with optical sensors on those. So I guess a sort of all effect sensors more but yeah interesting anyway that's not helped because that's all kind of bolted in there somehow I don't see how I think maybe it's plastic welded um, all right we're gonna have to go another try with the pliers okay so it's not perfectly straight <laughs> but it's a lot straighter than it was um, yeah, that is not, that's, that's not thin metal down there, that, that took a heavy whack to get that to bend. Uh, the gimbal seems to be completely straight, and that's more or less straight now, so that's kind of, I think we'll take that as a win, for now at least. <coughs> Gave myself a bit of a nip with the pliers as well. Right. enough why it just kind of comes out of the bottom hole and then these side bits just clip in there we go and back together and more or less straight interesting design anyway that's basically the joystick dealt with of course we don't have a works yet but we'll find that one out and get this thing running 
So I think what we need to do is we need to take all these bits out. I want to give this a bit of a clean, I think, because that residue annoys me. Um, I think I've got replacement caps. I might just replace them anyway. They look all right, to be fair, but yeah, better to replace them. You don't need to than not replace it if you did, I guess is the end of that one. Anyway, let's remove all these boards and we'll take the parts out and we'll give them a clean. So annoyingly, <laughs> the boards appear to use the um, aluminium covering as a grounding point in two places. So we're going to have to desolder that. That's quite annoying. Or do we? No, we definitely do. We definitely do. That is quite annoying though. But anyway, yeah, so this has all come away. And you can see we've got these little push buttons here. Stand kind. Don't need to be cleaned as well. Uh, this board that the buttons push onto definitely needs to be clean. That looks awful. Right, uh, I guess we turn it around and we'll get this board out now and then we can probably take parts of it away. Yeah, this is not going to come out because this is plastic welded in. Okay, so cleaning this is going to be more difficult than I thought, but I guess just be more different for, you know, there's no alternative to what I'm about to say there. Okay, let's just continue anyway. Yep, yeah, unsurprisingly, everything is just soldered in place. So that makes it really difficult to do anything on this board. Okay, no problem. So, a couple of things, anyhow. Judging by the fact that these screws when they came out were also covered in some kind of greasy substance it really feels like this has had a bunch of grease or oil or something dumped on it at some point in this past which is not great obviously uh, the second thing is going to be a lot harder to clean because we're going to have to yeah there's no way I'm desoldering all those wires so I don't have to so we're going to have to clean it in situ, which means the inside is not going to have a great clean, but we still do the outside. However, we've got this board more or less clear, so we can at least change those capacitors. I think, yeah, I think we're definitely going to do that if we've got alternate ones to use. Right, I'll go search my parts and then we will, um, components, parts, obviously. Uh, and. Uh, I'll be back if we're about to do some soldering or if we're just going to give this thing a wipe down and then put it back together again. Right, this is probably going to be a bit noisy because we've got uh, the desoldering station on and also a fan on to get rid of the fumes, plus I'm quite hot. It's in the middle of winter, so my house, uh, the water pipes feel the cold, my girlfriend feels the cold. I don't feel the cold, but the heating is on, therefore I need a fan. <laughs> right. This is going to be tricky because we can't really get much space because of all these wires. There are a lot of wires. Um, so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to... Uh, there's very few component leads that have been cut properly as well. So it's going to be give, touch, touch and go if we get the right ones. And the boards also are not... the, the polarities are written on the board. No, no. So we're going to have to make sure we keep track of that. So this has two 47 microfarad at 16 volts and two 470 microfarad at 16 volts. We have all those, so we've got replacements. Replacements are quite a bit smaller because, well, technology for like capacitors has improved since this was made. Um, they're also ones I replace in the market. I'm going to say probably much better quality than the ones that are in there already. Um, right. So, yeah, the polarity is all over the place as well. 
If I try and design a board, I try to keep the polarity heading in the same direction. I also mark it on the board. Uh, they've done neither of those things. <laughs> so we need to keep our wits about us for this one. Right, so we're going to be, if I can get this in shot, placing this one first, this one here, which is, uh, this is a 47 microfarad. Uh, and the negative is that side. Just need to work out which one it is here. I'm going to guess it's that. Oh, this is going to be. Yeah, I've got to be really careful. I don't actually singe any wires. I do not like working in these cramped conditions like this. Right, anyway. There we go, four capacitors were placed. I know you couldn't see very much of that process. Apologies, I can't get much angle around here. So I think the next thing is to uh, actually just give this board a bit of a clean. Wherever this, this residue is, I don't like it. So just take a two, uh, two uh, no, you know what, I've got proper glove, um, brushes. I should be using those. And some isopropyl alcohol. And we'll just give this a bit of a clean. <laughs> Slightly confusing moment when I had the massive brain fartiest of brain farts and I couldn't work out why none of this was fitting in and I realised I turned the board upside down some point. I promise you I am an intelligent person. But anyway, we will, I think, just kind of screw the boards back in again. We've given it a bit of a clean. Uh, the outside will clean a bit more as well. Um, we can't do a decent clean on this until we get these boards out somehow and it's been made difficult because all of these ports are plastic welded in. I could break that out and just try to redo it, but yeah, that's plastic welded in. I don't think that is, I think that's just screwed in, so you can't see the, the, power, the power connector, I think that's just screwed in. But yeah, we can't remove any of these boards properly because they're all kind of interconnected and all have reasons why they can't come out. But anyway, we'll just put this board back here. Well, you know what though, we can give that a clean. We'll give, oh, hello. We'll give that a brief clean before we put it back in. I don't think there's any point showing it. It's a bit of plastic. I'm gonna run through a tap. Anyway, back in a sec. Oh, okay, well, much, much cleaner now. So, or the machine itself is always not as clean as I'd like it to be, but it is definitely better. So let's start putting some of the screws back in. Right, for that we need to put you back in place. Which way you go? Oh, you can only go one way, that's handy. There you go. And then these machine screws. So before we give this a clean, well actually let's give this a test and then a clean, why not? Uh, let's, uh, someone asked about inside this power supply. Now generally power supplies are really designed not to get into. This one just seems it has normal cross screws in. But uh, hey, let's have a look. Oh, 
Now, I'm not Big Clive, so don't expect that kind of level of breakdown. I'm just going to go ahead and assume though that this is not particularly great. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I mean there's basically no protection in there at all. There's, there's a big ass transformer, well, not particularly big either, and a capacitor. And oh, it's not even. It's not, oh, we've got a voltage regulator as well. Okay, there's a little bit of protection underneath. But, yeah, I mean, we're talking minimal. <laughs> it's not secured in there either, that's amazing. Yeah, this is. I'm fully committed to my plan of not using this at all. Wow. <laughs> that's, that's pretty bad. Yeah, that, that's definitely not, not being used. Um, I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's just a 9 volt adapter, really. It's not particularly anything special, but still. Right. In terms of powering this thing up, so we've got our this thing that we pulled off, so we can connect it to our bench power supply. We know from uh, well, for patrons it'll be yesterday, but for the rest of you a week ago, uh, that the the black and grey wire is what we should be feeding ground into. And hold on, are they both black and grey? No, nope, one's just very dirty. That's fine. Uh, and the, the just the grey wire is the one that we should be pushing 9 volts into. If we do this on our bench power supply, well even the, even the power adapter slightly bent, if we do this in our, our bench power supply we get time to control the flow a little bit more. Um, so yeah, let's set that up. Um, I need to find a RF to VGA box, I've got one somewhere. Well I'll set that up and then we'll come back. Alright, so before we push the power through this, we're just going to quickly check to make sure we did get those leads correct. And we do that quite easily by just touching on the negative that's coming out of the uh, desk supply and then just touching the ground area. There we go, we have that. Make sure we're also not, we might as well double check to make sure we're not grounded. Nope, we're fine, it's all good. Right, so as far as we're concerned, the power is going to the right place. So let's put the case back on. Now I've got none of the controllers plugged in because we want to just see if we actually get anything on the screen first before we start adding in stuff. Got one of the games over here. This is the the sports title, which well, this one didn't have a plastic center, it just had a the weird cardboard thing, which is used in later machines again. Right, it's going to need a little bit of a clean before we do anything with it. Shame to call this a failure just because the cartridge was dirty. Right, so just giving it a clean with isopropyl alcohol. Oh, blimey, yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah. Good job we cleaned that. Uh, right, so I'm assuming the cartridge is going that way. Put the power off to begin with. Right, that's all connected. It's plugged in. We're connected to this, which is our little RF box. Now, this probably won't be tuned in to begin with, so we are gonna try to do something there. But I guess we'll just power up and see what happens. Well, not 
much so far. Let's try scanning through the RF. I'm sure this is going to work. I'm getting some noises you might not be picking up on the sound. Definitely some stuff under stress noises. Plus I think this has got a built-in speaker. I don't see it, but there's a grill underneath, so maybe it doesn't. Oh, that's right on the other side of the uh, range. Let's go back again. Yeah, unfortunately zero signal coming through. Right, well let's turn it off. Let's do a little bit of diagnostics. It's still fairly dirty. And if that's dirty then there's a chance the... This is dirty. Now there's anything hot. Nope, not in the slightest, okay. That's probably a good sign. I think we'll, we're gonna spritz the cartridge connector with a bit of deoxid for as a start. There we go, my deoxid can is very broken, so as much comes out of side as through the, the straw, but never mind. Right, now I guess first of all, what we should do is we should check to see this switch is even working. So let's stick on continuity. Yeah, so the, the first thing immediately is that's upside down. <laughs> I put it here upside down. <laughs> How I managed that? At least I assume it's. Like, hold on, no, 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 no. Because this one was the one that had the pad still in place. One way to find out where's the power coming? Hard to tell because it uses weird wires. <laughs> right, we need to work out where the ground is and where the fire when the nine volts are coming in. So go down here. Beep mode. <laughs> Try that again. Yep, that's upside down. Right. <sighs> Let's turn that around and then try again. the right way round. We'll give it another try then. We're going to put this cartridge in out a few times because we sprayed with the oxy in there. And this way it will just kind of push it into the pins. There we go. Right, that's connected again. It's connected again. Turn this on. Right, we've got a bit of draw this time by the looks of it. Not a huge amount still there. Still not convinced. Again, I'm going to have to do a bit of diagnosis on this. <clears throat> so first of all, we're going to see if the switch actually works. Which we do by just checking
right, switch works. Um, and now it's on, we can at least see how much power we're getting as well. So, Hmm. Yep, power's going through. So the switch is indeed working. So the switch is working. Okay, so I think that this little inductor here is at full. Uh, there's like no current going anywhere through it and so not getting to anything down the chain so yeah we need to try to work out what to do about that okay so <laughs> the picture's not great but hopefully if I just zoom in actually we'll be able to see even better okay I'll cut whilst I, uh, I kind of reorganize we have a picture right <laughs> how did we do this this is very much one of those do as I say, not as I do moments. So the issue was one of the inductors had uh, uh, well, uh, diode power, uh, rectifier diodes had broken. And we found this out because literally the power wasn't going through it. It should be going through. The... Now, the diode on where it was, all it was doing was acting as a rectifier. So it basically made sure that um, if the polarity was wrong, it wouldn't break and also that there would be no voltage feedback. So it was moderately safe with a bench power supply to just not do that. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah so I just kind of desoldered it and sold a bit of wire in its place. Again do as I say not as I do that's not a great solution. Um, they are there for a reason just so I get a better picture anyway. Yeah that's not that's not a solution obviously they're there for a reason but um but it does show that this machine is actually working um which has a few failed components i will try to get the same uh, diode it's still it's, yeah it's, it's, it's still a, a fairly like uh, easy to get piece so it's not too bad but no we have a working machine I'm just yeah running through just trying to get this tune in it, this won't tune in properly by the way these little RF boxes RTV boxes, are no good at tuning these machines in I will at some point record some footage sorry mate yeah this is really blurry oh there you go we've got a tiny bit better picture I guess we can kind of do fine tuning to try to get it better but it won't be much better than that I've never got a decent picture they're just useful to have on the bench so you can see if anything is even powering up at all but as you can see we do indeed have yeah and the buttons work there we go we're switching between the games you see that hopefully <laughs> right well I may put some game footage in the middle here I don't know yet We'll see if I get the time to do it. But uh, there we go. It um, it kind of worked. Fall back from the life. I need to clean it up, and I will show the cleaning up and everything, uh, and it looking hopefully a lot better uh, in this video as well. But this is the wrap up anyway. So um, yeah, uh, this Hanimex machine <laughs> in really bad state. Um, a bit of a clean up, a bit of a, a fixing on the on the joy sticks, and uh, removing a vital component that wasn't as vital and was just causing us issues means that we've now got a working machine and uh, at some point I'll fix it properly <laughs> I mean what I do need to do is I need to make sure that I definitely when I put an AC power on this I need to make sure I get that voltage correct because now there's nothing stopping it from causing massive issues if I, if I do get the polarity wrong best I could do. <laughs> Unfortunately one of the controller ports, as soon as I tried to use it, 
it's kind of now. So we're just doing it with, uh, with my phone because there's no point. The other controller does work and this game is, oh, interesting. <laughs> Not entirely sure of the rules yet, but if we change the modes, you can see there's like different things. <laughs> That's all very simple games. There's not really much you can do. But uh, yeah, kind of interesting still. There's any particularly interesting, it's mostly difficulty levels and then just repeats the same games. And most of the other ones are Pong. But there you go, it does work. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit like. If you really enjoyed the video, please hit subscribe. If you didn't enjoy the video or you have something else to say, then please leave it in the comments below. See you next time.